Hey guys, so this video ended up getting blocked by the BBC, so I'm going to have to edit it down for YouTube. I am going to upload the full version to my Patreon, but I'm going to make it free to the public so you don't have to uh, pay to see it or anything. I just felt like doing that out of respect for the troops that are being honored in this ceremony. So enjoy the abbreviated version here on YouTube, or you can go to my Patreon. The links are in the description and my pinned comment. But regardless, thanks for watching. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we have something for Music Sunday. All right, so we are continuing with Remembrance Day weekend, as I've been calling it on my channel for the past few days. We have Roger here. And we have Miss Scarlet, who is napping below me right now. <laughs> So it is Music Sunday and I wanted to take advantage of that and use today to kind of explore the Royal British Legion Festival of Remembrance. I think that's right. I've had a lot of you in the comments even for months now asking me to uh, take a look at this. And of course I'm no stranger to concerts in the Royal Albert Hall. I have been looking a little bit at the last night of the proms. So I've seen a few performances in the Royal Albert Hall, but this looks to me to be something completely different. Now some of you also in the comments let me know that the uh, British Legion is the charity that kind of takes care of the veterans, I guess in the UK and apparently the US has an equivalent of it and I'm assuming that uh, maybe Australia and New Zealand have their own version of this also but once again this is a part of the UK uh, and maybe the Commonwealth that I was completely oblivious to before. Anyway I guess they put on this Remembrance Day festival every single year in the Royal Albert Hall. Now I don't know who actually performs in it or what to expect with it. I've just seen tiny tiny glimpses of it. I've seen bands kind of like doing stuff in the middle of the floor of the Royal Albert Hall. But other than that, I really don't know what to expect. So there also seems to be some traditional things that happen each time. So I'll be looking out for those. Now I was going to just choose like one or two songs maybe from this to, uh, to watch, but I don't know. I just felt like I wanted to watch the whole thing to get the full experience. And I wanted to watch the one that happened this year so that I can just kind of like have that shared experience with all of you instead of picking one from past years. So I got myself a little VPN and we're going to be watching this on the BBC iPlayer. And because it is BBC, they're very strict about uploading stuff to YouTube. So <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to be blocked or if they'll let me put it up and just do a copyright claim on it. Sometimes that happens. I just never know with the BBC. So, so yeah, I guess without further ado, we'll just go ahead and watch this. Uh, I'm always a sucker for a good concert, for some good music, and for uh, like patriotic displays and uh, commemorations and stuff like this. But I'm used to watching stuff like this for the United States. You know, the all of the U.S. patriotic songs, our armed forces stuff that would be meaningful to me as an American. So this should be a really interesting experience seeing this done in a different country, seeing how all of you pay tribute to your soldiers in the UK, listening to some of your patriotic music, and also just having that element of uh, the, the royals and all of that type of stuff that we would never have over here in the US. So it should be a really, really interesting, different experience, I think. Just kind of like the uh, opening of Parliament was, <laughs> that was a completely different experience for me. I'm expecting this to kind of like be along the same lines in a way. All right, so I'm ready to go. Scarlett, are you ready to go? Well, I guess the good news is hopefully she'll chill out and let us watch this <laughs> as opposed to sometimes when she likes to uh, jump up and interrupt things. I don't know. This is a long one, so maybe she'll get to that point. But anyway, I know Roger and I are ready. So let's take a look at the Festival of Remembrance. And in this centenary year for the Royal British Legion, we gather once again at the Royal Albert Hall to acknowledge members of the armed forces, present and past, for their service and for their sacrifice. So this is 100 years ago they had the first one, right? So let's say Queen Elizabeth. We got Prince Charles and William and Kate, obviously. Oh, that's cool on the floor. How are they doing that? 
So pretty. <laughs> That's what I would have been doing. I would have been hitting the button to make that go off. <laughs> when I do pyro for like theatrical shows like this. Those are LEDs the on the floor. Of building, steeped in history so great. We meet together to remember, to pay respect and contemplate. A memory guarding what it means, we share this moment of remembrance. We remember all who came before, as through remembrance we honor them and hold that hope forevermore. That's so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Within Weird Ale, each one of the poppies represents one particular person. We're a small village, but we've got a big heart. <laughs> it's a long, long from which there is no return. He's my brother. You know, I've heard this song before, like the original version, and I never thought about the lyrics at all and what that actually meant. You know, helping each other out. Getting back together again with veterans, people who share the same kind of humor, it just makes you feel part of a team again. Sorry. I definitely think it's life changing. If it wasn't for places like the Batback Center, I don't know where I'd be, you know. Oh, the band of her Royal Majesty's Marines, so the Marine band, okay. Our Marine uh, dress uniforms look very similar to these. Not quite the same, but similar. We must have copied you guys. <laughs> They're my favorite uniforms, though. I used to play percussion in a marching band. Regimental Sergeant Major Ross Martin of the Irish Guards leading the way. I'm assuming these are veterans, but you guys have to explain to me are these just veterans that live in Chelsea or go to that hospital? Op Granby is overshadowed by the second Gulf War. So, in a way, it is the Forgotten War, but certainly not by those who were there and their families. Is uh, I'm going to pause who, it. Who, who did get killed. Oh. Here, really quickly. Um, sorry, I'm trying not to pause too much. This, uh, this war was, op it was known as Operation Desert Storm over here in the U.S. Was it another name? Was it Granby in the U.K.? Or are these two different things that, uh, that happened? Uh, just... Curious, I've never heard of Operation Granby before. I have heard of Operation Desert Storm, which is obviously what we call it over here. Uh, so I'm just wondering if we had two separate names for it or if these are two different uh, operations that happened during this war. It's interesting how similar our uniforms are over here in the States to yours corresponding branch. I'm starting to think we just stole all of our uniforms from the Brits. <laughs> Our Air Force uniforms look ex extremely similar. Oh, they're playing our song!
It's interesting they're doing the drill with these types of guns. Our drill teams use the more... the older looking rifles. They don't use these types of guns. I think I noticed that during the opening of Parliament too. Something similar to that, where the ceremonial guards were using these types of guns. We think about James every day. He was so passionate about being a Marine and uh, being the best. His presence is with us all the time. We're certainly really, really proud of him. He was a, such a big part of our lives. Yeah. I'll just say that uh, a couple of guys that I grew up with, uh, they're really more friends with my brothers than me. Uh, so I wasn't particularly close to them, but I do remember hanging out with them, you know, when I was a kid. Um, they were, I don't know what branch they were in, Army or Marines uh, in Afghanistan, and they, they both lost their lives too over there. It's really weird when you have your peers that you, you know, were friends with when you were kids, and then you know, they die in a war. It's a really, it's a hard thing to wrap your head around, you know? <laughs> Try not to cry right now. Down below in the hollow are graves, rows of them, English graves, and mothers are standing over them. They have their wish fulfilled at last. I have no grave. My boy was missing, just missing. And don't be afraid of the dark. And What were those drums representing? I saw Scott's guard on one of them, um, so I'm assuming different military... I don't know what the term is, but... The drum altar has been built, ready for the service of remembrance. Drum altar, huh? <laughs> Are these just the different the branches? Started with the oldest of the three services. I just have to say, I'm assuming this is the um, the song for the Navy. Like you guys have your different branch songs, like we have over here. The only reason I've heard this before <laughs> is because um, Captain Picard sang this on Star Trek. <laughs> That's the only reason I've heard this before. I was like, I've heard this tune somewhere, and I just realized where. To the Grenadiers, he was Colonel of the Grenadier Guards for over 40 years. Queen's Royal Hussars, the most senior light cavalry regiment in the British Army, operating the Challenger II main battle tank. What's the Book of Remembrance? Does it have the names of people who have died in it? The service of remembrance starts with our first hymn, and the festival organist once again is Peter Crompton. I haven't sung this since I was a kid. We meet in the presence of God to mark with thanksgiving the centenary of the Royal British Legion. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, 
nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. This is, uh, I know this is a probably horrible time to stop this. This is really interesting to me, though. As an American, you guys don't have any qualms, it seems like, about your flag touching the ground. Our, we do. Like, our, the, it's actually against the flag regulation, I think, for the flag to touch the ground. It's not supposed to. Uh, so I was watching to see how far he dropped it. I was not expecting him to drop it all the way to the ground. I'm assuming this is symbolizing the fallen, you know, those who died. So I'm, it's, I'm sure it's really symbolic, but um, very interesting, that difference there. brings the festival of remembrance of 2021 to an end oh my goodness i am so glad i chose to watch this entire thing rather than just little you know i don't know one or two songs from it or whatever i don't think i would have gotten uh anywhere near the impact that watching the whole thing gave me there's just so many different thoughts and emotions running through this and then also just seeing it through the lens of an American, seeing some of the differences and similarities in the way we do things uh, in you know events like this. The ending of this, I was not expecting. I was not expecting them to um, turn to the royal family. It's a very foreign feeling thing, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, that's not a criticism at all, because I know it's a huge part of your culture and your tradition. I don't know, it's just it's just interesting to, to see that. I don't think I've ever seen that actually before. I think that's probably the main reason why it hit me so hard. It was, I've heard God Save the Queen before, but for everybody to like turn to her, to her or the royal family, she wasn't there, and address them directly and then raise their hats to, um, you know, to the queen and all of that stuff. I do have to say though, I'm starting to, to second guess the Air Force song. I thought that they were playing the American Air Force theme song, brand, branch song. But now I'm, I'm wondering if uh, if it's actually a British song and we just we just stole the, um, the tune and put our own lyrics to it. <laughs> because I didn't hear any other American tune in this at all. So that was a bit of an, an anomaly to me. And I don't understand why they would have played it at that particular point. Unless, because it was talking about the Gulf War. And I don't know if they were just truly paying respects to the American Air Force. Or if that's a British song and I just am un unaware of it. So I would say just overall though, um, this was a, an absolutely beautiful event. I've been to some similar to this, again, regarding the, the the United States. So I kind of, I get the feeling of being there and what that would be like. But overall, I would say a very, very beautiful event. Very well staged, very well done. I have to say also, I am just really, really impressed with this overall like Remembrance Day, learning about it, learning about the poppies, learning about this festival, and then the various ceremonies that happen uh, at the cenotaphs around the UK and probably the rest of the Commonwealth as well. I don't want you to take it the wrong way. I think that Americans, and I think falsely now, 
have this idea that we are at the top of the game when it comes to like commemorating the military and supporting the military because we're so vocal about it. You know, we're, we're constantly going around and saying thank you for your service to the soldiers. We fly our flag as a symbol of them a lot too and our support of them. And I, th I think kind of in our own heads, we're kind of like at the top when it comes to that sort of thing. I guess what I'm trying to say is that after seeing all of this, I have tremendous respect for the, the UK and the Commonwealth in general for the tribute that you pay to your militaries. You guys may not be as vocal about it all the time like we are, but this right here proves that you guys are just as serious about it. You just go about it in a different way. This whole thing has opened up my eyes and, and allowed me to see something that I didn't know previously. It does give me a different perspective. I'll just put it that way. But we are not done with uh, Remembrance Day weekend. The Cenotaph ceremony is taking place today, which I have not uh, seen yet, so I would like to go back and watch that at some point and probably make a video out of that. A lot of you guys have asked me to watch the Tower of London poppies as well, so I'll probably try to fit that in in the next couple of days. Uh, so this is going to be extended just a little bit, just because I want to get more of a an idea of you know, what happens, what goes on with this. I feel like if I just uh, left it here, I'd be missing out on some stuff. So also I apologize for Scarlett who interrupted during a very solemn moment in this. Um, she just got, it, it was too much for her. She just got restless. Anyway, I put her out of the room so that I could finish this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. And you can also find all of my social media links, Patreon, Discord, email, P.O. Box, all of that stuff in the description and in my pinned comment. Roger here, and I thank you guys for watching. Scarlet does too. I think she's off chasing squirrels now. So I'm going to leave it here. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.